Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a brand new budget podcasting or broadcasting or voiceover microphone. The microphone being the PreSonus PD70. And if you want to find your very own PreSonus PD70, it'll... I don't know why it became a carnival barker, but it will cost you around $130 like always. I'm an idiot. Like always, I am an idiot, but I'll throw some links down below. For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at around 4.32 p.m. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post. I am such an idiot. So check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. What a shocker, you are going to get the microphone. You'll get a foam windscreen, which is already installed. You'll find a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, which is already installed in the microphone's yoke mount, and you'll find some documentation. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels incredibly sturdy, like it could be used as a weapon, very similar to the Rode pod mic, where if you drop it on your toe, you're going to be very unhappy about it. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal grill underneath the foam windscreen. The yoke mount is made out of metal as well, and there is a plastic tightening screw. On the rear of the microphone, you will find the XLR port. Here is a quick comparison of the microphone's grill underneath the windscreen compared to the SM7B. Very, very reminiscent, wouldn't you say? And this microphone is made in China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 56 dB, and an impedance of 350 ohms. Now I'm spinning around the PD70 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. I'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then I will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now let's go ahead and see how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. And without the windscreen, please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the PD-70 to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed to the corner of my mouth and here is how the audio is sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and now we're about four feet away from the microphone and about four feet away from the brains. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you Leet Gamer Girls, here I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds and performs in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now I am tapping on the desk to see how well the microphone is able to reject those given the built-in microphone mount and I'll tap the boom arm. Yikes. Now to be as annoying as possible because that's what I do best, I'm going to go ahead and tap on the microphone's body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. When we look at the SM7B, a really popular recording technique is to remove the provided foam windscreen because that opens up the high end a little bit and record without that on it. So I want to go ahead and see how the provided foam windscreen for the PD70 affects the tone of the recording. Right now, I am speaking into the PD70 about three inches off of the end of the microphone and the foam windscreen is on it. And here is how the audio is sounding. Make sure to listen to the high end of the microphone to really hear what the foam windscreen does to it. And now I have removed the provided foam windscreen from the PD70. I am at the same distance, same gain setting, and here is how the audio sounds. I definitely do hear a bit more in the top end. It is a little bit crunchier, and the foam that comes with the microphone seems to dampen that quite a bit. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the PD70 and a couple of other microphones on the market so we can see where this fits in amongst the lineup. 
We are starting on the PreSonus PD-70. I am about six inches away from the capsule. My gain is set at around 430 on the ATI-20. No post-processing, but check the lower third because I will have to boost each of these microphones slightly different to level match them. And here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the first mic. First, we are starting on the Zoom ZDM1. This is another new podcasting microphone. This goes for $80 by itself and I am about six inches away from the capsule. Same gain setting, check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. But here is how this microphone sounds compared to the PreSonus PD-70. We are back on the PreSonus PD-70, what a shocker. And here is how this microphone sounds, $130 dynamic XLR microphone. Here is how it sounds, let's jump to another one and compare it to that. Now I am on the infamous and classic Shure SM58. This is a $100 handheld dynamic microphone, six inches away from the capsule, same gain setting, same distance, everything. And here's how this sounds compared to the PreSonus PD-70. So a handheld dynamic versus more of a broad, casty looking dynamic mic. Guess what? I'm back on the PreSonus PD-70, and I do think it's a cool-looking microphone because it's a mix of the 7B and this Y-style mount like a U47 FET. I think it's a really cool-looking mic. Let's jump to another one and compare it to that. Now I am on the Rode Pod mic, which is another studio broadcast dynamic microphone. This goes for $100, and here is how this compares to the PreSonus, which is $30 more expensive. Same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third, and let's jump back to the PreSonus so you can hear that, and we'll do a couple more comparisons. We are back on the PreSonus PD-70, 130 bucks, nothing has changed, same distance, same gain setting. Let's jump to another mic and compare it to that. Now I am on the SE Electronics SEV7 handheld super cardioid dynamic stage microphone, something like that crazy, crazy name, but $100 handheld dynamic microphone, same distance, same gain setting, check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. Here is how this microphone sounds compared to the PreSonus PD-70, another handheld stage dynamic against more of a broadcasty looking and style dynamic microphone. And I think this is going to be the last microphone we compare it against. Here is the PD-70. Let's jump to one last mic so you can hear how this compares to that. That being this next thing. And with the similarity in the metal grill under the PD-70's windscreen, I of course have to compare it against the Shure SM7B. I am now about 6 inches away from the capsule of the 7B. By the way, this is a $400 XLR Studio Broadcast Dynamic Microphone. Gain is set at around 430 still. Same distance, same gain, check the lower third. I will likely have to boost this quite a bit more than the other microphones because it is a bit quieter. But this is what a $400 XLR broadcasting dynamic microphone sounds like compared to a $130 broadcast dynamic microphone. And I think that's 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 all I have to say about that. Is, is that what Force Gump says? But let me know in the comments down below what you thought of these microphones. Which one did you like the best? Do you think the PD-70 held up against the other microphones? Or do you think something else beat it out? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're worried about how the mic looks in your camera frame, you'll find you're fine because this mic looks really tight. That didn't really work, did it? I should have ended the guitar four beats earlier, so when I say tight, the guitar stops this. And it doesn't look tight like this. Obviously, it's it. with this on, now it looks tight. Now it looks... This looks 
untight. This looks untight, but it sounds... You get the point. Okay, I think if you're buying this microphone, you're going to be mainly paying for the really great build quality and also the looks. And first up in terms of pros, the microphone did a fairly respectable job at plosive rejection. It also did a pretty good job at background noise rejection. And as I just alluded to, it looks pretty cool. And then in terms of cons, the microphone didn't do a very good job in terms of rejecting bumps of the microphone arm. And to my ears, I find the sound to be a little bit too top heavy. But now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I actually really enjoyed it. The low end wasn't powerful, but that also means that it wasn't muddy, it was nice and controlled. The mids were unoffensive, nothing stuck out as piercing or anything, it didn't seem claustrophobic, and the top end had a nice amount of grit to it that I really enjoyed on the distorted electric guitar. Then on the acoustic guitar, I kind of liked it. It did seem to have some nice presence to it, but it lacked any kind of substantial body. The top end did seem to get a little bit closed off as well, but that's kind of what you expect out of the majority of dynamics. Next up for singing, I don't think this is going to be anybody's first pick. The upper end seems to have a little bit of graininess to it, which I wasn't a big fan of, but it wasn't terrible. I did really enjoy the control in the low end, though. It didn't seem loose or muddy down there at all. And the top end, it doesn't have shimmer to it. I guess it has kind of a sheen to it, which I think worked pretty well for singing. And lastly, for spoken word, that's what this microphone is made for, but unfortunately, I'm not too keen on it for this application. The low end simply seemed a bit too anemic for me. It didn't have any weight to it. When you get right on top of it, it doesn't have any oomph to it, which is typically what you want when you eat a microphone. The mids, again, I have no issues with those at all. But then when you get to the upper frequencies, I think it becomes a little bit too top heavy because you don't have that low end to really off set the big boost that they have, although it does maintain a very clear and concise sound. Unfortunately, I think that can get a little bit fatiguing over long periods of time, so if you're using this, you would need to do some kind of post-processing to tame some of those higher frequencies. And to wrap up, would I recommend the PreSonus PD-70? Not really, it's not my first pick. At $130, it has a lot of competition. There are so many handheld dynamic microphones that will give this thing a run for their money. When I did all of the tests, I preferred quite a few other microphones that I compared it against that were cheaper. But if you are looking for a cool, broadcasty looking microphone in this price point, you got a couple options to pick from, and you are the one who has to decide which one you like the sound of the best. I just personally would prefer many other microphones over this one. All right, I think that's going to wrap up for today. But if you found the video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos, you can subscribe. Whenever I do these outros, I just turn into a robot. There's a subscribe button. Click it. There's graphs that say you're not subscribed. I don't care. Watch the video if you find it useful. Most importantly... <laughs> I like you. You're cool. Thanks for still watching, I guess. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you're in the States, I hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving, an amazing holiday season, and I will talk to you later. Bye.